Are you going to have throne? Are you all hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so I want to start off with question two in this past paper. Right, question two part B, they want us to use nodal analysis to solve this. Now the whole thing about this question is I have a current source in series with this external resistor. So if I have to use node analysis, I have one, two, two principal nodes, All right? So with respect to principal node one, this five amp source is leaving the node, All right? So current entering is positive, current leaving would be negative. In this case, this 10 amp resistor does not play any part in the circuit. Are we okay with that? So from node one, between node one and node two, I have a five amp source, right, leaving, and a node two, five amp source, and then. So if I have to write the equations for this, it'll be V1 minus 40 on one. Excuse me, can you record your session, please? Say again? Can you record the session, please? Can I record it? Yes, please. Not today. <laughs> Listen to me. Is there a reason why, sir? No, no specific reason, but um, I need you to listen up. All right? So the voltage or the current in this branch between point 0.1 and point 0.3 would be V1 minus 40 on 1. The current between terminals one and two for this two resistors V1 minus V2 on two, right? So V1 minus 40 on one and V1 minus V2 on two minus five is equal to zero. So this will be the equation for principle node one. Principle node two, V2 minus V1 on two, V2 on four, V2 plus 20 on eight, right? Plus five is equal to zero. Okay, so these are the two equations, and you go about to solve. Any questions on this? So can you cover it one more time, please? V1 minus 14 1 plus V1 minus V2 on 2 minus 5 is equal to 0. And then V2 minus V1 on 2 plus V2 on 4 plus V2 plus 20 on 8 plus five is equal to zero. Question three has to do with a Tevinan circuit. All right, so many of you were building this in multi-sim, right? You need to know how to apply the technique in order to get it right, right? The first thing you have to do is to remove the element we have between the terminals A and B. So if I have to find resistance, the next step is to set the sources to zero. So I showed circuit this voltage source to set it to zero. And I open circuit the six amp source to set it to zero. So when I do that, I'll have 10 in parallel of 40. Looking from point A, 10 in parallel of 40. So I'm going to be 450, that will be 8 ohms. And from point B, all I have is 20 ohms. So the re reduced circuit as seen from the terminals A and B will be 8 in series with 20. That will be 28 ohms. Okay. Next thing, we're going to find the voltage existing between the terminals A and B. So voltage at A is the same as the voltage across the 40 resistor. So 40 over 10 plus 40 by 36. All right, so that will give us how much? 40 and 50 by 36, um, 0.8, 21. The voltage at B, right? I mean, I have two branches, you know, okay? So VB minus 40 and 20, right? Minus six is equal to zero. So find, using that now to find the voltage at B. So VB is equal to VA minus VB. All right. This should be okay. This question here. <clears throat> I 
have this scenario here. Okay, but the voltage here is given in sinusoidal form. So if I have an expression in sinusoidal form, the first thing I have to do is to take this and bring it into polar or phasor form. Right? So the first thing I need to do I'm going to say VRMS would be equal to right I'm taking a peak value 150 And I divide in that by root two. Okay. And because of the fact that I have no phase shift in this equation, I have a phase shift here. I'm sorry. So if I were to find current, current will be 16.5 and root 2, angle 72.4 degrees. In this case, this would be angle 0 degrees. So angle 0 degrees. right zero degrees okay now what is also important in this is that this 3000 we see in here this is the angular frequency and just to recap this is represented as omega and omega is equal to 2 pi f right so this is important notice the angular frequency of the voltage and the angular frequency of the current is exactly the same value it cannot be different so if I have to use the information here in the first case, right, I need to find the capacitive reactors in the circuit. Right, so XC So XC would be equal to All right, one divided by omega C. <coughs> So omega here is actually uh, the value of 3,000. So using this now to find the capacitive reactants. Okay? So I need to find the capacitive reactants before, before I can actually work the problem. Any questions on that? So I'm sorry, I should do the same thing for the one multisim. To use the multisim, I have to find the XC force using the capacitor, get the capacitance to find we'll XC and we'll go to that. So this is the, the multi-sim group paper. Okay. So this here you have XL and you have XC. So you need because multi-sim doesn't give you XL and XC, you have to go use the formula to find L and find C. So XC is equal to 1 upon omega C, XL is equal to omega L. So once you find L and C, you can construct this circuit using multi -sim. Now, many of you are asking this question here. Superposition theorem states that we, we, we need to find 
the response in the element with one source at a time only. So because I want to find I here, when you're constructing the circuit in multisim, you set this source to zero and you work the, and you find I with the five milliamp source only. Then you come back, right? Set this to zero and use the 20 volt source only. And when you finish with that, you add up the two currents. Are we okay with that? Okay, I understand. Yes, sir. All right, so we're going again. back to the screen. Only you all seen it? Let's show you about the screen. So we've all seen it. Okay, so this is just like the, the last question. Everything is in ohms. So make sure you look at the question. Once it is ohms, you look as it is. If it's not in ohms, which question does sir? In Faraz, you need to find the reactors in the circuit. Okay? What, what page are you on? What page? This is here, this is April 2019. There's a possible question I showed you. Do we not see any paper? Okay. No? No. Still on the lab. All right. See that? No, sir. Right now, it's being done. No, it's being done. No, it's being done. No, it's being done. No. It's still on the lab. Why is it giving back to this lab, boy? I don't know. No. No? Yes, sir. All right. So let's look at this question here. This question they want us to find this current I zero. So what is important here? We have the loads given in different forms. So load one we have in the first case, this here is S, S1. So S1 is two kV. And 0.8 power factor leading. What is on right here? This. So power factor leading is really a, a capacitive circuit. Okay. So Q would be negative. So because the fact that we have S, all right, so just to recap, S is equal to V I conjugate. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so therefore, <clears throat> load one, equal to two, remember we in KV, right? Angle. See what I'm really just doing. So after this, could you go over a question for of the past people? Yes, no, yes, no. I did one, one thing at a time. Right? So load one is that's where I have to record it. Right? It will be two angle. Right, 
So this year, we're going to um, power factor is equal to what? Cos theta. Power factor. <clears throat> Vi cos theta. Is that? Right, so this would be cos of zero point eight. Okay, and cos of point eight is actually thirty six point. No, sorry, fifty three point one degrees. No, thirty six point eight degrees. So in other words, <clears throat> for load one, S would be equal to two angle So, so when, you, when you construct any more of this, um, we have to use a power factor. Sorry? Um, Constructing about this five, it is a power factor to find the. Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Yes, now I'll go to this. I'm looking at this question here right now. Okay. Right? All right. This one will be equal to two angle minus 36.8 degrees. Okay, and I can take this now and bring it back into rectangular form. So this would be equal to two by point eight, one point six plus. Sorry, not plus minus j one point two. Okay. Load two, 1.8 kilowatts, so that is P2. And it's telling me that Q2 has, is a capacitive value. So this will also be negative, right? So S2. equal to 1.8, remember everything is in kilowatts, minus J Q2, okay, and S3 equal, it's given here P3, so P3 is equal to 4 kilowatts, right, and the power factor Power factor three is equal to <clears throat> zero point eight six six. Right, so this will be cos right t theta three. Right, cos theta three. So the inverse of this of theta so is inverse of theta, you said? Is that? It's on inverse of theta, you said? Well, I uh, yeah, I want to try to save time on the ones. 
right? So theta will be cos inverse 0 0.866. Right, so this will give me how much by um, 30 degrees? Okay. Follow up, Carl. Can you check it? Yes, sir. 30 degrees. Okay. So uh, if the fine S3. S3 would be equal to P3 divided by 0 0.866. Number um, P3 would be equal to S3 times the power factor, power factor 3. Right? So S3 would be equal to P3 divided by power factor 3. That will be equal to 4 divided by point 0.866. Okay. So you find S3 and Q3 will be equal to what? Q3 equal to S3 sine 30 degrees. Any questions on this? Okay, so because it's lagging, Q2 will be a positive value. So this would be equal to 4 right, Remember we are dealing in kilowatts, right? Plus G and whatever that is. I will go for that. So, any questions on this? Anybody? So, once I find the three loads, okay, let's say that we have this total was equal to, let me say, 10 kVA. Right, so we're using this now. Right, out of the three S's, S1, S2, S3. So we're using that now to find the unknown Q2. Okay, yeah. All right, and just to recap, to find I0, I0 will be, will be equal to S total divided by V, all conjugate. S total divided by V, all conjugate. Okay? Yes, remember, S is equal to VI conjugate. So I is equal to S divided by V, in brackets, conjugate. All right? Yeah, Kevin, sorry, I forgot. Well, good luck to the lab. I'm telling you, I'm recording. Yeah, it's recording, yeah, it's recording. Okay. You see the lab, question? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So anybody have any, any problem with question two? No? No. Question three. A little bit, sir. Yeah, right here. Which one? Question three. A little bit, sir. A little bit of confusion on question three, sir. That's all. Question three, the first thing you have to do is to remove the slow. So everything is seen in blue here, you have to take it on the circuit. Right? Bill of construction is the multi sim. You take out this first, right? You set this corresponds to zero. And you measure the resistance as seen between the terminals A and B. So in other words, that would be R1, right? In parallel with R2 plus R3. And you should get about 2.06 kilo somewhere around there? Yeah, 2.7. All right, so 2. whatever. 
2.0. Next step with this between A and B also removed, you put in the current source. Connect the voltmeter between the terminals A and B and you measure that voltage. So that would voltage will be a Thevenin's voltage. So when you're doing the calculation, this voltage here is the voltage across R1. And All then right. what you do, you place the element back between the terminals A and B, right? In the Thevenin's circuit. And they want to find the power dissipating in the 47K resistor. So all you have is a simple series circuit after that. VTH, 180 volts, RTH, and R. Okay? So, so yes, in finding, um, so when you're finding the RTH, um, R2 and R3 will be R2 plus R3 will be in parallel with R1, right? Yes. Right. But when you plug back in the current source, R3 and R2 will be in parallel. No. When you plug back in the current source, you're not consuming resistance again. All you want to do is to find the voltage existing between the terminals A and B. Uh, Use okay, it. Let's run Mac one, one more time. I want to get the um, power dissipated by the 47 ohm. All right, so when you put this back, if you're doing, it, you're doing the calculation, right, this will be the node, one, one node. So the voltage across here minus this plus the voltage here will be equal to zero, right? So when we find this voltage, okay, the voltage drop across here we need to find, right? So that will be the current in this branch by R1. Okay. Well, if I want, I can simplify this again. Current source in parallel with the resistor is equal to a voltage source in series with the resistor. So I have a simple series circuit. And all I simply do is find a voltage drop across here. Make it sense? Repeat that, please. A current source in parallel with a resistor is equivalent to a voltage source in series with the resistor. Right. So I'll end up with a simple series circuit. And in that simple series circuit, all I need to do is to find the voltage drop across R1, and that will be equal to VAB. Okay. okay. So for a circuit too, could you show me how to connect the voltmeters across the nodes for multisim? Well, some people are reading the nodes. For 2B, sir. Right, and a meter must all be connected in series with the element, or in series with the Source. No, so for 2B, the voltmeter for 2B. Putting nodes. All right, so this is one principal node, this is second principal node. So the voltmeter is connected from this point to the input point, from this point to the input point. All right, so it sounds. Well, question this part is straightforward, right? You build it as it is, and you connect the voltmeter across it. Right, so they want us to use source transformation. Source transformation means to say that voltage source in series, you convert that into a current source. So you're working as it is, find VAB, then you convert this to a current source in parallel with the trium resistor, uh, current source in parallel with this two resistor. So this would be three amps in parallel with R1 and 10 amps in parallel with R2. And then you use a voltmeter across here, across R4, the final voltage. That's it. So question. the last same question, right? You have to leave the circuit just as it is in multi -sim and find the voltage. You have to break it down. Well, they say using source transformation. So you construct it as it is, find VAB, and then use the source transformation and repeat to verify that the answer remains the same. So nine in, in series of three is equal to a three amp source in parallel with R1, a 10 amp source in parallel with R2. When you're constructing this circuit, this here in multi-sim, 
right? This here is an AC current source, not a DC current source. You can find this in amortism. Um, not exactly yes, that, one, but something similar. So this is AC power, AC current. So this is the AC current source. So you click on this and place it here. So you can come in here now and change your magnitude, right? Make sure you use the appropriate frequency. If, say, if you use 60 hertz, right? You put it at 60 hertz, okay? And if you have a phase angle, you come here and change the phase angle. If you have 60 degrees, it's easier to 60. Next thing, the current and the voltage is a peak value. So let me say I have 5 amp RMS. 5 amp RMS is 7.07 .07 peak. Okay, notice it's taking a peak value. Peak here stands for peak. Any questions on this? Same thing with the yes, same thing with the voltage source. So we have to include all that in the um the procedure and stuff, and seeing how we construct the circuit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come tell it, right. This is peak. So if I have a hundred angle zero, a hundred RMS is equal to one forty one point four peak. Frequency, if we're using 60 hertz, change that to 60 hertz. If I have a phase voltage, that means I have 90 degrees, put 90 degrees, and we click OK. OK, oh, this you must do. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. But only Any questions on that? All right, so going back to... So you say pre, pre voltage is one, one peak, one RMS is equal to 141.4 uh, peak voltage. V RMS, or V RMS is equal to V peak divided by root 2. You remember that formula? I can follow that. Then. If I have RMS value, and I want to find peak value, I multiply the RMS value by root 2. And root 2 is equal to what? 1.414. All right. Say, so you can repeat that one more time, please. V RMS is equal to V max divided by root 2. All right, Vmax is same as Vpeak. Okay? Yes, I got to know. So I'm going back to the passive. Are you seeing the passive on the screen? Yeah, we've seen it. All right, so question yeah. five. <clears throat> All right, so to ease all up, <clears throat> just do the calculation for question five, part A. Okay, do not do this in multi -sim. Okay, cool. All right, question five. You're going to do this in multi -sim. Just remember, Z1 is an inductor, so this will be J40. Z2 is a resistor, so it will be 50 ohms. And Z3 is a capacitor minus J25. Okay? Frequency is not given any questions, so we're going to use the frequency as 60 hertz. So just to recap, XL is equal to 2 pi FL. XC is equal to 1 upon omega C. XL is a positive value. 
exceeds a negative value. <clears throat> and so we have to show the mortisum um, circuit in the lab itself? Very correct. All right. Right, so, so how you go about constructing this circuit for part B? Same way as usual? Like this here? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so remember Z1 will now in multisim, that will be our L value. This will be R and it's gonna be C. So we have to put a, a inductor, a resistor, and a capacitor. Instead of like the Z boxes. And you use three meters in a circuit. One to measure IS, one to measure I2, one to measure I3. So somebody was asking the question, when they add these two up, they didn't get IS. Remember, these are vector quantities. So you have to add them vectorially. So IS is equal to the square root of I2 squared plus I3 squared. Okay? All right. So, so um, in order to find the boxes, the Z boxes itself, we have to use the, um, we had to actually put like inductors and capacitors in the multi cell, or we had to try to find the Z component. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Then if, we back to the circuit, the first one, right, was an inductor. Right, it doesn't matter what it is. So what do you mean it don't matter what it is? No, when I said uh, uh, constructing the circuit, you, you need to actually calculate the values, right? So based on this, right, inductive reactance is 40. So L is equal to 40 divided by 377. So 40 divided by 377 is how much? Point one zero six, right? So this will be point one zero six Henry's. So a question: Where you get the, the three seventy seven from? A lot, but if I use a frequency of fifty hertz, two times three point one four times sixty is equal to three seventy seven. Oh, 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 okay, cool, no problem. Okay. So the next circuit, next element is what? Z2 is a resistor. So I look for resistor in the circuit. Right click. Right, what value we have there? 40 ohms? What's the value for R2? R1, sir? Huh? Yeah, 40. 40? Sorry, it says 50. 50? Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is, and I mean, uh, you know exactly what to, to use. And the capacity is 25. I want to rotate this, but I don't see anything to rotate it. Right click, right click. So right the, click on your CD direction. Right click, right in. On the right, right click. See. So that's double tapping. Anyway, we don't what. Whatever it is, right? So, and the next one is the capacitor. Somebody was saying what it is? 25 microfarads? Nice, 25 volts. So, I can do it. I think it's. But X is equal to 1 over 2 pi of C. So C is equal to 1 over 2. 0.106 um, millipares. 1 divided by 377. Divided by 
divided by how much by? Where's X here again? 25. Hundred and six point one meter Fred. Micro is ten to the minus six. Yeah. Okay. Micro is ten to the minus six. Six point one, right? And they construct the circuit, right? So these two are in parallel, this in series, and you place your multimeters accordingly. All right, so thanks. All right, so before we go, so Z two is in parallel, Z three, right? Yeah, Z two and Z three is in parallel. Okay, right, and and series is Z one. So before I log off, I want to show you something. Right, so this is a typical lab, right? This person got a hundred in this. Right, so look at the format. Okay, the abstract, very, very short. Table of contents. So your theory, your method, your results, your calculations, your discussion, your conclusion, your references. Exactly as you would have the lab format. So your theory is very, very concise. What does question one relate to? Series parallel circuit, right? And the relevant formulas associated with it. Question two, whatever it is. Question three, question four, question five. Right, simple theory to the point. That's all I want to see, right? Your method, very, very simple, right? Relating to the questions, okay? What you do, to actually achieve the results. Okay, the multi sim results. All right, the calculated values. Right, reject. All right, so these are all the calculations going down the road. All right, with respect to each of the question. Right, so just remember five, question five, part A, right? Discussion, you compare the multi sim results with your calculated value and try to be as short as possible. Get to the point, okay? So discussion one, multi sim results with calculated value, same thing for the rest. And conclusion, right? What you conclude about the whole five questions, okay? Whether they match up, whether, whether there were any inaccuracies as the kids to be, right, etc., etc., and then your reference, where you get your source of information, right, to formulate your theory. Any questions on this? Yes, the um, the way that this is formatted, so like all the um, all the theories are in one section, all the yes. discussions, it have to be exactly like that, not individually for each lab. You can deal if you want, but to save time, I remember I don't want to see too much right there. Get to the point and call a judge. 
Alright, sir. Show Teddy better. Remember, this is this is not a I don't want to fifth seventy five page report. They show Teddy better. You go come straight to the point. Is the multi sim reading uh, compared to the calculated values? Right? Yes, yes. You know, go down the road. Any de any, any deviation? You give a, a brief explanation, not a two page report. So it's okay if it's handwritten, right? Any issues at time? Hand, uh, do it handwritten. Scan it as one PDF document and send it in. Yeah. All right. So, so, right? You see this one is perfectly right now. It's just a time and the same time, even if we are in a crisis. Just how right there has to be. No marks will be lost for that. So, if you type it. If you type it, well, you have time. Okay. So I'm getting no penalty. There's hundred, but I just type down. Any questions, anybody? Take to go back. Any questions? Clear. So we'll be uploading this lab in Canvas. Yep. But I'm not seeing an option to click on to upload it. If you can, if you're not seeing it, you can even lift it. Alright. Right. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. So, what time is it due? Yeah, that's my question. That's all. What time is it due tomorrow? Well, uh, <laughs> so, so before I answer the question, is it possible that we get a, a, a little extension on this, please? <laughs> yes, sir, about a week extension. So you, you said two people still working. So because uh, I was watching the um the quiz to um the it's up on from the quiz to the eight. Every time you watch that, um, yes, I'll, I'll do the exam. All right, so I'll give a lot till Friday, right? Now we talk. Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you very much. So, thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. And um, so for the quiz to submission, right? On the canvas, it will have a submit button when it opens up. We didn't do it yet. All right. So, it's cool. I'll send it in one time. So, can you repeat that? When you start the exam, and. Oh. Right, so you, you, do you know you, you can't um you, you do handwritten when the exam is complete you have a limited time frame in which you scan it and send it up as a pdf document oh. right so, so, so the, the quiz two exam is not the exam that we have to scan and submit what yes, i saw you have a, a quiz two exam open on canvas so is that the same exam or is it a different one no, same exam. Okay. All right. So, I see the exam open to the 8th. So, we have until the 8th to do the exam. That's correct. But if faster, it's better if you could do it. All right. All right. And your exam is on the 18th, I think. The 28th, somewhere around there. So, we don't know. We didn't get, we, no, um, we didn't get a schedule yet. Stay, really. don't know. I think I have that. Just hold on. Let's try to find it. Take the screw back down, sir. I see that. Already. Okay, I'll find us and folio. Any any questions again? So how much attempts we get in the quiz? Like how like um attempts? Say again? How much attempts we get in any quiz too? My questions? No attempts. Much attempts? Yeah. Oh well boy. Only one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Quiz <laughs> Annie Lab is the same thing. Well, boy, uh, you, you know, and you're not supposed to know that, Anna, but since you know that, I try to use all of so all you should be smart enough. So, so how much questions do you have? Let's take a look. Don't do what they do. Any questions again, anybody? So, um, any, so, any um, like information with respect to the finals, like if, like, how it's gonna be, like just comment. Just like all the us. No, so I mean with the current situation. Was yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. he set up? Like how we going to go about it online? Oh, well, uh, I'm not too sure what I did. When is the first thing for first time for everybody? Well, how about that? I guess exams will um, give only some kind of information on that. No, so we don't receive anything like that. Well, maybe in, time, uh, in, in the near future. That's because of it. Right? Yes, no, that's where finest exam um, exam time team of all yeah. <clears throat> so leg one thousand and one is the twentieth of April. Nine to twelve. Right? Hello? Yes, sir, yes, I'll be here. All right, so yes, twenty April nine to twelve. And it's an online exam. And you have to the April, right? Twenty eight. And so um what was the instructions you gave as far as um question five is concerned with the multi Question five part A, just do the calculation. Okay. Five part B, you do them all the same and compete with the calculator value. And for five part, we use any frequency as 60 hertz. 60 hertz, correct. Right. All right. Yes, sir. All over till Friday. All right, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks so much. Yes, sir. Good day. Take care. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>